Welcome to the Kingdom Intelligence Report. I am your host, Larry Raglan, and tonight is the third Thursday of the month. And if you're watching it live, it's a very special Thanksgiving edition with Stan Deo on the Kingdom Intelligence Report. You got a lot of ground to cover. You had all your turkey. You're sort of resting now. Let's close out Thanksgiving with Stan Deo right after this. Let's go. Well, you know, every Thursday of the month, we have the Kingdom Intelligence Report. And the third Thursday of the month is when we have Stan Deo as our guest. He is a profound and prolific expert in many fields. Uh, he has lived probably 10 lifetimes in his lifetime, and he is still going strong and bringing information that no one else brings. And as I said, this is a part of a monthly program, a weekly program that we have every month here. First is, th- is Paul Begley. The second Thursday is Ricky Scaparo of End Time Headlines. Tonight is the third, which is Standeo, and next week will be Pastor Mark Carell. So without further ado, let us welcome into the program Standeo. The crowd is once again going wild for you, brother, because everybody loves Thank you. Thank you. everybody loves old Standeo. <laughs> How are you doing out there, sir? Oh, fine, fine. Um, been busy with a lot of stories. Uh, been uh, stories that are kind of sad kind of frightening but uh, we got to cover them yes sir um this is thanksgiving season yes and, uh, people are flying all over the country um and i've got two stories that i've got to share with you okay uh so if you bring up my share screen okay uh, all right we got yeah. it okay first story is about industry expert warns thanksgiving flights could be unsafe Mm. As a record number of travelers prepare for takeoff, the Air Marshal, uh, uh, Air Marshal National Council Director Sonia Labasco said, as air marshals are still being deployed at the southern border, leaving flights unguarded. Now, uh, if you uh, click on the picture, you'll see that. If you click on the, the actual text and stuff, it'll take you over to uh, the article. Okay. And okay. This, this, this is rather frightening because... Um, the the air marshals are are, are all except for a, a small number being shoved off down to uh, the border yeah. to help the border guards who are doing like changing you know diapers and stuff like that and checking in uh, illegals coming into the country. It's it's really quite uh, distressing. And then the rest of them that aren't there at the border doing yeah. the border guard job are being. Uh, are tracking January the sixth people. Wow. Um, yeah, and, and uh, in the article there, it, it tells. I think it's called Operation uh, Quiet Space, something like that. I'll mm. just uh, check and see here. Uh, yeah, where are we here? Air travel. Uh, yeah, Quiet Skies. It's called Quiet Skies. Okay. And that's okay. a that's a project within the Air Marshal program. So it leaves. All, all the people that were on flights going into Washington there, January 6th, they're being tailed by air marshals now. Wow. And even people that were flying on that flight that weren't even going to the uh, the, the capital for, you know, anything but visit uh, relatives, they're being uh, followed. And that's since January the 6th then, a lot, you know, uh, last year. So um, this is this is Friday. You, ought to, you actually ought to read the article. And if you can find the thing on the Fox News Channel, Look at this article and listen to, uh, to, to the woman talking about it because uh, she's saying, "Look, if you're flying, uh, you're not going to have an air marshal to protect you. So if you got terrorists on board, well, good luck. If you got mm. people that are acting up, she says, when you get on the plane, see if you know if you can sit next to somebody that's like a football player or uh, you know a heavy that can help take down the bad guy if somebody is going crazy on the flight. So there are millions of people, like 30 million people, during this holiday season flying in the United States." And without air marshals on the aircraft, you're totally on your own. Wow. And you know how that's gone. Think about really it. Really bad. Wow. Yeah. So so in your opinion, is is this is this sort of a just a talking point or, do, or is in your gut are you feeling like something possibly could be planned to happen? Are they trying to signal to us that this is not just precautionary 
they've got intelligence that they believe something's going to happen over the week over the holiday. Well, this woman, yeah, yeah, the head of the association there, she is trying to tell you uh, all the things they've done with the president and, and various officers, uh, you know, officers like uh, the border patrol people and everything else, trying to get help to get more air marshals in to solve this problem. And so now that in desperation, she's put it on to the, the news with uh, um, uh, with Fox News. Well, I'm going to pull, pull, pull this article up. I want to, this right here is what she says. We are ushering in illegal immigrants on the border and leaving the traveling public unsafe, telling viewers that air marshals are being deployed at the U.S. southern border instead of the transportation sector where they belong. Wow. Yeah, yeah. That's crazy. And, yeah, yeah. She's she's broke everybody's bell, and they're all just ignoring her. And when you have Iran saying that they're going to um, get even for you know us killing General Soleimani and various other things, they're going to hit us with an attack. And we know that we've had thousands, if not more, mm. terrorists get through the border over the last yeah. two or three years, right? Yeah, exactly. And they're in place, and so they can be on flights, they can be in cities, they can be in small towns, big towns, wherever. So she's telling you about this particular part, which is air uh, traffic, you know, air flights. Um, so, folks, uh, you know, if you got to fly, you got to fly. Uh, Holly and I have elected some time back not to fly because of things like this. But uh, it's it's a warning to you. Um, so, and, so you and Holly have made a decision. You're not flying anymore. No, no, we're driving or we're not going. Oh wow. Well, wow. well, maybe a private flight if somebody's going to fly us to some meeting or something. But other than that, we're not going to go on commercial air aircraft. And wow. and and get this in slide fifty three. Share that uh, screen again there. Okay. And yeah. slide sixty three on this on the thing. FAA panel calls for urgent action after near misses at U.S. airports. The National Airspace System Review uh, Team released a fifty two page report on November the fifteenth which cited air traffic control and staffing shortages, technology issues, and funding uh, needed as the suspected reasons for the incidents. Now, look, uh, this is a picture I took from an Australian uh, near miss, but uh, mm. if you click on the, the text, uh, it will take you. Uh, we'll do that. It'll take us over I'm, to— I'm going to show, show them the article here. So this okay. is the article. Okay. So, th yep. so the, this is the article that you were referencing there. Um, yeah. Unbelievable. It uh, says— uh, the report said that past investments in overhauling FAA technology has worsened the agency's technology. Newer systems being layered on top of older systems, and fewer of the older systems have been decommissioned or replaced. So, so you and they, we, and they we, need five point three billion dollars to bring it up what? to snuff. Five point yeah, three billion dollars, right there, right there. Okay, the I see it. I see it. Wow. So, how bad do you want to fly? <laughs> yeah, I'll pat you on fly. But yet we're sending over a hundred billion dollars to Ukraine and and uh, and going to try to send another hundred billion dollars and we and our air forces and I mean our air, our airlines and our safety conditions are in this mess. I mean, what's going on, Stan? Well, obviously the mastermind behind all this is Satan, I'm sure, because it, it's a chessboard prepared for checkmate, you know, mm. to checkmate all the Christian folks here. And the and the and the Christian folks to come, um, look. Share that screen again. Slide okay. forty nine. Okay. Okay. Slide forty nine uh, is let, let showing me, how. Let me, let me do it this okay. way. So I'll just use mine here. So we. Oh, know okay. All right. I can just tell you. Right. 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 So okay. Which, which slide? Uh, slide down 40. a bit. Right there on your lower left. Right there. That one. All right. Click on okay. The there we go. There we go. Now this is showing how long it will take to restock the ammunition we've been giving to Ukraine and other places. Wow. And, you know, five years for 155 millimeter cannon ammunition, uh, you know, um, they can only make so many per year and transferred to Ukraine. You see in the first column, we've given them a million and we can only make 240,000 a year. Goodness. So, you know, and, and, and you go down to the Javelin missile there, you see, yeah. okay. <laughs> We can only do a thousand a year, and we've been giving those away like they were candy. So, this is unreal. So, I've got to go back and look over this because I've been I've been wanting these numbers. I have not seen these numbers. Did you put these together? Did you? This is incredible. Um, let's see. I think one of my sons, Jeff, sent this to me. He found it somewhere in the news. But you can that look is, at this. That is look unreal. Look at inventory. Yeah, look at inventory replacement. The title of it. And you can look at that later and read okay. the articles on it. Oh, I will. Uh, 
that that is just unbelievable. I, I mean, I mean, is uh, that is that basically saying that's un? We can't restock that period. I mean, you're basically just saying if something if somebody was to attack us, we 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 can't even restock our own defenses. We we've given our defenses away. Yep, that's it. We've given our oil away, our energy. We've given our uh, military. We made it woke, and so we're not being able to recruit the people we need in various uh, branches. Uh, our inventory is, you know, our equipment is uh, needing replacement and updating. Uh, aircraft, uh, tanks, uh, you know, howitzers, everything. Uh, and and this one here just showing you that you know we're looking at replacement rates that are measured not in months but in years in to years. get these things. Re- and we haven't got time. We haven't even got an industry no. that's working at the moment. So, and, and, and not to mention the fact that we are now sending munitions to Israel. We're sending yes. munitions to Ukraine. And then there is the belief system that we're preparing ourselves to be in battle in with China over Taiwan. I mean, we're spread out all over the place. Then you get reports that their supposed missiles in Cuba been rebuilt, stations fashioned upon America. We're, we're in a... This is what I've been trying to tell everybody. I believe 24. What is your opinion, Stan? Do you believe that in 2024, all of this that we're talking about and that we talk about every week, is that is this the year that it really becomes apparent just what is coming as far as on the war front? Or what, oh, what do yeah. you think? If not before the end of the year, certainly uh, early next year. The things with the Middle East situation, this has to be resolved uh, fairly quickly. And in the resolution of it, we're going to see the birth of the Antichrist. People mm. need to know this. I'll talk about it today. Okay. Um, this. Let's see here. What would? How will I start with that? Um, Jared Kushner, p- pull up slide uh, fifty-three. Okay, slide fifty-three. Let's see. All right. Slide. Now this is a a, a three-hour video. You the following is a conversation Uh-oh. Uh-oh. with Jared oh, sorry. Kushner, sorry. 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 Okay. former yeah, senior advisor to the. To me too. Put your, yeah, put your sound okay. off there. Okay, all right. You, you see that little speaker button? You yeah, I got it. Okay, all right, okay. Now, all you'll see th- going through that is, um, you know, Jared talking to this interviewer, and the interviewer is asking some very pertinent questions about uh, Jared and uh, what his plans are with Mohammed bin Salman in the Middle East mm. for organizing um, a global – well, I, I – I, uh, when I say global, I mean all the Arab nations, the 41 Arab nations uh, surrounding Israel, to sign the Abraham Accords. Now, if you if you uh, click on the picture of that, there okay. are some some stills I took out of it with some statements he made. Uh, okay, okay, on, uh, right. on the yeah, picture yeah. there. Okay, right. yeah, on the picture. Yeah, and then zoom it up. Okay, and you'll see starting at the top and working your way down. Okay, Hamas has to either be eliminated or severely degraded, he says. Keep going. Mm. A guarantee needs to be made from a credible source where Israel doesn't feel threatened. Hold it right there. Now, that credible source is probably not going to be the United States. It's going Mm. to be Mohammed bin Salman and his coalition of Islamic nations. There are 41 of them involved. This, while we have been sleeping over here, 41 nations have formed into a coalition to fight, quote unquote, terrorism in the Islamic states. But what do they consider to be a terrorist? Hmm. Satan and the little Satan, America and Israel? We, they have built an army behind our back while we were thinking, oh, yeah, they're taking care of terrorism in their countries. you got to look at the meaning of the words. Yeah, yeah. And they have, they have set this up. Uh, and, uh, okay, so they're going to be a credible source to guarantee Israel that they'll take care of Hamas. I, sc- I scroll down. Uh, okay, so it's a demilitarization or some kind of security that they will offer Israel and they will stop Hamas. And they will do that. Yeah. Hamas, okay. But in so doing, it will give power to the coalition of Arab or of Islamic states and to Mohammed bin Salman who set it up. Um, uh, it Okay, now it, it says here, it, it just shows uh, too also that uh, rebuilding Gaza could be easy. What they're saying is in his discussion, I think it was $2 billion, that after we get rid of Hamas, we're going to put in a civilian government there in Gaza. What, what was the date of this? When was this interview? Oh, in the last 10 days. So You'll he's – he, okay, okay. I got it. I'm listening. Wow. Now, he explains how he got the Abraham Accords signed by the people that – or the countries that did sign it already. 
And he used a business plan. He'd go to the head of the country and he'd say, okay, look, um, let's solve your problems internally, food, you know, political, whatever. We'll make a business plan to solve it. We'll put money into it. And the business plan, you know, it's a spreadsheet. This is what we'll follow to bring peace to your country uh, and uh, to Israel. And between the two of you, we'll solve the problems. So he said, let's have business plans. And he, his degree is in economics and whatever. And so he's very good at making business plans. So he plans to make business plans for yeah. all of the Arab nations and Israel in a, wow. in a, um, in a peace treaty of sorts, you know, uh, the, uh, what does Daniel say about it? Uh, the uh, Prince of the Covenant, uh, make a covenant yeah, with all yeah, the nations. Yeah, yeah. Now the Antichrist comes to power <laughs> with the help of a small people, not a country, a small <laughs> people, Gaza, is a small people wow. and he will use that to consolidate power in the middle east and uh, you know his vision for 2030 uh mohammed uh, bin salma's vision um it, you know uh, jared likes it he says it's a wonderful piece of uh, you know uh, paperwork to set up a plan to make 2030 the year that um you know um, arab and uh, well Saudi Arabia and the Arab nations and the coalition all form a stable Islamic government on the planet. It's not obvious to everyone that's not read the paper, but that's what they're doing. So you were asking, was I aware of Mohammed bin Salman's actions? Oh, yes, yes, yes. I um, knew you were. <laughs> um, I mean, uh, look, uh, it's um, go, click on slide uh, 56 on the text. All right, slide 56. All right. Okay, go in there now. Okay. Now, this is the Islamic Military Counterterrorism Unit, the IMCTT. That's the 41 nations. Now, I think, yeah, yeah, they have member states there. And if you scroll down a bit, you'll see the nations that are all joined with Mohammed bin Salman in this. Mohammed bin Salman has gotten a military leader, a general from Pakistan, to head up the military uh, arm wow. of this whole... Uh, organization. Now, this is interesting because Pakistan uh, is a member of the, the group, the uh, IMCTC, and they have nuclear weapons. Yeah. And he is going to be the military director for Mohammed bin Salman and all this. I mean, we have been asleep while this wow. has been going behind our back. Nobody's talking about this. You're right. Nobody. So This is unreal. Explain yes. to, to our viewers, Stan, what exactly... A little bit further into detail, what is the organization of Islamic Corporation? Is that is that sort of like their version of, of a mini NATO or something? What what is this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an that's an Islamic uh, NATO, if you wish, an Islamic coalition. Uh, all have common goals under Islam. Now understand that the Antichrist of this age is going to behead Christians and yep. behead Jews, and that's an Islamic tradition, you know, to behead. Mm -hmm. And yep. Mohammed bin Salman does not, uh, you know, he, he doesn't shy away from that. I mean, he got, Khashoggi had him cut into pieces, but then he is also yeah. about a hundred times a year, he's beheading members of his uh, population there in Saudi Arabia mm -hmm. because they violated some rule. Uh, yep. he, he so fits the bill, it's amazing, but he's not alone. If he's the Antichrist, uh, I, I, I say if, but I, I believe he's the guy. I mean, he just fits so many things. Mm -hmm. I hope the recording of this show is spread far and wide outside yes. your, your group. People take it and yeah. spread it to everybody to, to see what I'm saying. This is very important. And if you look at slide 54 it's, uh, and click on the text, it's called the bromance of the princes. Okay. Now, Muhammad bin Salman is a prince. His father is ill in hospital and will die. So if he is the signer of the covenant of peace, the prince of the covenant, he's got to do so before his father dies. Or it's got to be um, uh, Jared Kushner. The two of them are thick as thieves. Uh, and, and in the press, they call Jared the, you know, the prince, uh, the American yeah. prince of this yeah. kind of stuff. And so he's nicknamed a prince as well. Uh, so either one of them could be the Prince of the Covenant, because Jared certainly will sign things. Mohammed bin Salman will sign things. So you got to watch these two. One of them could be the Antichrist. One of them could be, you know, the uh, false prophet. You know, first and second piece of Revelation 13. So these two guys, they're thick as thieves. And Mohammed bin Salman 
um, I think less or early this year, gave uh, or donated to uh, Jared Kushner's um, development fund for Israel, developing business in Israel and surrounding states. He gave him two billion dollars to his fund, and Jared uh, um, organized another billion. So he's got three billion dollars to organize uh, development in Israel and uh, some surrounding countries funded by Mohammed bin Salman. Now, Mohammed bin Salman is sitting on top of a fund in uh, Saudi Arabia. It's called the um, Public um, something Information Fund, Public uh, Interest Fund, I think, something like PIF. And he has control over $850 billion in that fund. He's going to use $540 billion of it to build the city Neom that we yeah. know about. OK, yeah. and he's just getting money from everywhere. Now, he and Jared are both aware of uh, artificial intelligence, of digital currency, blockchain tr trading. Uh, yeah. uh, ben Salman owns uh, shares in some of the international blockchain organizations. He and Elon Musk are absolutely close brothers like he and Jared Kushner. The three of them form a triumvirate of evil. They just... <laughs> I, I tell you what I've said. I've said before. You know, Elon has 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 done some good things for freedom of speech and all that. But I don't throw that. Guy, I don't trust that guy as far as I can throw him. He's he's playing both sides, and I I agree. He is. He's got some things that he's doing to protect freedom, supposedly. Uh, but he's so heavily involved in AI and in this Neuralink thing that that he's doing. And and you know, I I talked about it actually in my church Sunday. I preached about it. Then he, one of the things that he said, Stan, I'm sure you've seen the video when he, when he demoed the Neuralink, he literally said on the demo, when he was showing this, he had a, a flesh looking robot or whatever, simulating what would happen. He said, we're going to make the lame walk and the blind see. And he began yeah. to illustrate how he was going to call heal, heal blindness and make the lame walk. And I just immediately, like you, you talking about right now, I start thinking about the false miracles that are, that are prophesied to happen by the Antichrist system. Unbelievable. Well. Elon Musk, I may have to add him to my page of potentials in the, the Antichrist <laughs> of this age. But I mean, you know, what he's su suggesting and things that we've talked about, uh, you, friends of mine and, I, and my brother, the doctor, about people with spinal injuries. Yes. Okay. How do you jumpstart? How do you jumper cable across the brake? And by uh, using this chip in the brain, they're going to be able to reroute neurons around the break and, and a chip inside the body, possibly on the spine. But they're going to be able to let the lame walk again to have use of their limbs. Yep. And in some cases, they're going to be able to grow new limbs over a period of time using a solution and electric charge on, on the, the neurons that uh, drive that to arm or leg or whatever. Uh, and blind? Well, okay. Um, well, probably uh, the can't. The way he did that is he, he, he showed that he's going to implant a tiny camera in the top of the skull in the Neuralink that will be connected to the part of the brain that controls sight. And that brain, that little camera, which will be so tiny you can't even see it, when the head is turned, the camera is working and is going to send signals to the Neuralink and, and tell the brain, even without eyeballs, they're going to be able to process and see. And I'm like, yeah. what? world are we yeah. living in yeah well it's going to be you know uh, an interesting thing because he's going to offer infrared vision night vision and all kinds of stuff to that camera that you can't even do with your normal eyes i mean oh that's a good point what a deal you know or sign me up exactly it's, oh oh it's just and, bad. and that's and that and is that not how they're going to convince a world to take the mark and all this because they're going it's just going to be so looking like it's for the good so many people, we, we just saw, you know, what we just went through around the world, how quickly people just lined up to give their freedoms away. Think how quickly people will line up to give their freedoms away when they see the lame walking and, and they see the blind seeing, but yet they don't have to deal with sin. They don't have to go to church. They don't have to believe in a God to get that kind of miracle. All they got to do is believe in science. And they're going to be the like, leader. and the leader, and the leader. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, you know, I watched uh, several videos on those robots that they're making and how they're controlling a kind of flubber rubber that uh, moves muscles of this uh, um, robot so that it's like a human, you know, wrinkled in the head, looking like that, and question mm -hmm. marks and, and serious looks. And um, this is artificial intelligence in a little 
you know, brain body there. But when you can link them with radio to a, like a quantum computer, yeah. you can make an image of the beast speak, an mm. image of an individual like he's there. Wow. And he could even be dead. And, yeah. I mean, I've seen it. I've seen it where the guy on the stage in front of the cameras is, you know, John Smith. And he's sitting there talking like he's Donald Trump. And yeah. you think, you swear that's Donald Trump talking because the AI has put his face over this guy's motions like this yeah. Yeah. and his voice pattern. Deep I mean, fake, deep fake technologies is, is so escalating so quickly. Um, and that, that sort of transitions. And I, and, and if you want to talk more about Jared Kushner, uh, and Salman bin, uh, bin Salman, let me know. Uh, if not, I'd like to translate to, uh, okay. another topic. Okay. Uh, I would like to ask you, and you may not even be familiar with this, but you know, Sam Altman, he is one of the co-founders of OpenAI that started the chat GPT that has exploded AI. Everybody's using this little chat GPT bot, which is crazy in, intuitive. But he is considered to be one of the, the fathers of AI at this company called OpenAI. Well, just right before we began this show, uh, it was either last night or night before last, they fired him, the company that he co-founded, OpenAI did. Right. And right. Microsoft hired him immediately. And I wanted to show you this article and get your on-the-fly response to this because this is a, as, as a result of what just happened. Let me zoom it in just a little bit more. It says, um, excuse me, i got to go, got to back it back out because it won't let me get rid of that top part. But it says that, that there are fears when Altman's acquisition strokes fears, Stokes fears AI control is consolidating. And it goes on to say that uh, Tuesday, as you know, right before the holiday, uh, that he was let go and so forth. And, and, and Microsoft hired him. But now, and I don't want to get too far into this, there's a lot of reading here, but the premise of this article is that all of a sudden, within a week, Microsoft, OpenAI, and now they're believing Amazon is going to merge with Microsoft and quickly AI technology minds are consolidating to a small number of people. And when I read that, I thought, I'm going to ask Stan what he thinks about it because while all this is going on, like you said a while ago, we were asleep and um, Ben Salman has built this coalition of an Islamic NATO type thing. Now we're seeing a coalition being built of all the minds in AI too. Do you think that's just by chance or do you think everything is sort of streaming in to what is coming? That it's all well, you know, going to be a part of something. I agree with you. You know, I'd agree with you. Uh, looking at the bigger picture of the whole planet and uh, let's go up a notch. We talked about Mohammed bin Salman, et cetera, et cetera. And the, the uh, army he set up, um, and the coalition, rather. But remember that China is also uh, supporting Iran mm -hmm. and supporting Saudi Arabia. They have peace talks going between them. Now, Russia is kind of an also ran with this, but will be involved in the Armageddon crisis, the Gog Magog war and that. But China yeah. is following the the um, the book of Sun Tzu's the Articles of War. You know, um, they're they're investing. In all their enemies, America, you know, even in Russia, in, in Iran, and Saudi Arabia, India, they are investing in them and directing them to fight with each other, and they're mm. funding both sides of the fight, wow. so that when we have beat each other to death, according to the rules of Sun Tzu, we are uh, we're defeat we're. We've used all of our weapons <laughs> and all of our ammunition, as we see. And then when we have beat ourselves to death, all the fighting nations, except for China, China will step in, come down through northern India with a rail line they're building, and come down into the oil fields. And that's the Battle of Armageddon, where they're going to try to take over everything. Mm. So we go one step above the Antichrist when we see the kings of the East moving. Mm. Anyway, that's 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 the game plan i mean so all so the, the it's levels. i mean come on people listen if you're watching this and you are not reading the bible you need to start reading the bible because it's more accurate just uh, just giving you an understanding of what's going on in this world than the media is giving you that anything you're getting in the world i mean it you cannot understand the world we're in without the word of god right now we are moving quickly quickly towards 
the, the battle of Armageddon, the things that are mentioned in the book of Revelation, the rise of the Antichrist, the false prophet, these things that we all grew up hearing as children, thinking in our mind, we were blown away by it, and we believed it, but we were just sort of figuring, how in the world could this ever happen? And just in the, just the last few years, Stan, even you, all that you go all the way back to the 70s, early 70s, when you were working in the industry, you were working with the FBI and all the things that you saw, you, you've you told me that you heard things back then that was coming that seemed impossible, but they were already knew it was coming, and now we're seeing it with our own eyes. You have watched in your lifetime the absolute fulfillment of Scripture Knowing evidence as well, like no one that I know of. I mean, when you look at the world right now and you think back of the things that you were told as a young man, does it blow your mind? Of course it does. And, and the speed which is coming to fulfillment, you know, being open to the public has, has just amazed me. I, you know, I say this several times a week. I can't believe it's happening so quick. I mean, if you miss one day of news, you're behind. Mm. Um, the Gosh, back in Dallas, I sat in meetings with um, – very rich businessmen that were forming at that time when we had primitive IBM mainframes like 360s and 1401s. They were then looking at ways to put an ID mark on a person that couldn't be removed so that they could get rid of uh, you know crime and uh, use social credits and stuff as digital money. Wow. And, and, that, and that was in 1970, 71, when we were doing that back then. And then, you know, uh, when I went to uh, the project in uh, in Australia for Dr. Teller, I was advised about us dealing with alien beings, which I later found out, of course, they're, they're fallen angels, but where we had bases with them. And uh, they were they were exchanging technology for us for letting them do certain things and have bases around the planet underwater and some above land and some below land. And so we were making deals with them to fulfill this great deception, this alien arrival as, you know, spaceship messiahs. Yeah. Um, so I've watched all this, all this coming to pass and been right in the middle of it, not by, by conscious choice. It was just the way my life went, the path that the Lord led me on, which is interesting. I had a dream vision probably a year or two back now where I, I realized uh, there was that the Lord had, had uh, called me to be what's called a, a shosvin, uh, a friend of the bride and a friend of the groom to, to uh, alert the bride when the groom is at the door. Uh, mm. And that's that's the role that I've been put into here. As I say, not by choice, but it just kind of happened that way. Wow. <laughs> Living life normal and uh, seeing all this stuff is just astounding. Uh, Did you think as a young man, e even, even you know, you're married, you're, you're grow raising your kids and all this, and you have all this information, in the back of your mind, did you, did you ever really think you would live long enough to see these things that you heard that they were trying to do, did you imagine that you would actually live in the times that probably the alien deception disclosure is going to actually happen? All these things that you heard about as a young man, were you thinking you were going to see that and it was going to escalate in your lifetime? Yeah, that's why I wrote The Cosmic Conspiracy in 1978, because I wasn't sure what was going to happen in the next 10 years then. Okay. And so I've been going along and along and waiting for it to happen. Now, short of having a car wreck or somebody, you know, killing me or something, I will live to see all these things in the yeah. next few months. Uh, it's just you heard that ahead. in the next few months. What exactly do you mean by we're going to see this in the next few months? What are we? What are you thinking we're going to see in the next few months, Dan? You're going to see a massive economic collapse of the world economy. And it'll have to be rescued by a world government set up, uh, you know, in an emergency, which has already been planned. And you'll see a new world leader come to, to, to power. You'll see the Illuminists, the Illuminati people losing their position, their power as we go to this new digital system controlled by the, the Antichrist. Um, and you'll see the beginning, I think, of the seven year tribulation. Uh, mm -hmm. Well, unless you're raptured out of here, which I think we will be. But still, those who have not signed on with Jesus at this point and are not saved, we'll, um, we'll see this, and uh, they're going to have to face this. So I see it happening, uh, even a, an invasion and a destruction of the United States. Why? Because, uh, like uh, Dimitri Dudeman said in his prophecies, the 
Chinese, the Russian, and our Middle Eastern nation, I'm pretty sure it'll be Iran, will invade, actually invade and attack America uh, from the air and on the ground and from three uh, three uh, sides. In fact, you'll see it on slide uh, 46 is a map that Holly put in the, in the book uh, or in the CD-ROM, uh, Prudent Places. You see the arrows of where the attacks are going to come according to the Dudeman prophecy. Now, America will be invaded, but the invaders will so destroy America, the major cities, that they will turn around and leave after a few months. And then um, America's finished, done, gone. Uh, we'll have a, a civil war, which is forming now between the left and right, the relig religious groups and whatever. Um, anyway. Um, uh, wow. I, you know, I, we're going, to, America's going down. And um, I, I hearken back to where uh, Jesus is saying to the bride, you are to, you know, the bride, the believers, come up out of Babylon. Come mm. up out of Babylon. Come. Yes. He's not saying, you know, if America and, and England are Babylon, which, you know, modern economic Babylon, he's not saying get out of. He's saying come out of. And the mm. only way you can come to him out of that is to get up in the air and go to him in the sky. My goodness. Come up. It's not just get out. It's come out. Wow. There's a difference. And uh, so, which that word is so key because I've taught many times that Revelation chapter four, verse one is a rapture chapter because he describes the church ages all the way through. And then he says, come up here with me and let me show you the things which must be hereafter. So I've always thought that come up hither in the King James come up here is what you're saying is was a, is a rapture command. Yeah, after after Revelation four, you don't see the the, the, the church mentioned as such. It's mm -hmm. gone. It's it's, it's no. been removed. The bride, that's right. anyway. That's right. That's right. I um, agree. Yeah. Uh, wow. And and there. Uh, by the way, I gave your uh, your show uh, when I was on it here. Oh, I think last month I talked about the uh, the Hopi. Uh, uh, prophecies that I was given, and uh, yeah. you know how it how it occurred, and all that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, and on slide fifty one, I put a link to it. I did that today on the uh, Hagman show uh, earlier. Okay. okay. And, so, oh yeah, I see that. I see that. Oh, yeah. thank you, thank you. Yeah. Well, yeah. yeah it was uh, instead of repeating it, I thought, well, let's just go over to where you and I were talking about it. And, yeah. Uh, okay. Slide fifty. There it is. Slide fifty. There, yeah. Yep. There it is, right there. Fifty. So, uh, fifty is the one. Yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Now. Okay, I see it. I see it. Yeah. The the other thing that I've spent a bit of time on is um, again, it's on MBS or um, Jared Kushner or e Elon Musk. I don't know who it's going to be on, but the Imam Mahdi. Uh, that's who the the Muslims think is coming. It's their Jesus. They yeah. think Jesus is a nice prophet, but they want the leader of the world, you know, the world dictator, to bring in Islam and Islamic yeah. law. And he's he's called the Mahdi, and some call him the Imam Mahdi. Now, I uh, I put that in. Uh, let me just see where I've got here in times. Okay, um, yeah, slide thirty-eight. The prophet in quotes, Ma Muhammad wrote this about the coming Al Mahdi. His name will be my name, and his father's name, and my father's name. Okay. This aligns perfectly with Prince Mohammed bin Salman's father. Salman bin Abdul Aziz mm. and Prophet Mohammed's father mm. was called Abdullah ibn Ad uh, al Mutab. Okay. Both Mohammed and the MBS share the same name, Mohammed, and his name will be my name. Fathers both have the iterations of Abdullah, his father's name, my father's name. So this is this is important to, to read up on wow. Imam Mahdi. Uh, Al Mahdi of the Arabic tradition. I tell you, if you get online and start looking, you're going to see a lot of things, including, you know, like the 20 signs of the Imam Mahdi's, uh, Mahdi's arrival. One of them being, which is, I mentioned in slide uh, 43, is the rising of the sun from the west. There will pe be a period of time during the Mahdi's reign when the sun will appear to rise in the west instead of the east. Now, this has happened twice before. We have records of it in Egypt and Chinese astronomers records where the sun rose in the west for a while because this, the crust of the earth had been shifted by a large meteor impact. What do we have in Revelation about a star, wormwood falling into the yep. oceans? It's, yep. it's going to hit within, uh, with force, and it's yep. going to shift the crust of the earth because it's a thin layer on the planet, and it's on ball bearings almost with this chalky formation underneath the, the crust. It's going to shift it, so we'll we'll be cattywampus to where we should be, and we'll see mm. the sunrise in the east. 
uh, sorry, in the West for a while. So uh, they even and, and, allow and for that, that. And when that happens, when the pole shift happens, that that is does that not create major environmental cat catastrophes as well? From what I've been told, is when there's a pole shift, it that that's not just the pole shift of you know seeing the sun rise in the West and that kind of stuff, but it affects tectonic plates, it affects volcanoes. And, you know, you think about that right now. Right now we have uh, the major volcano about to explode in Iceland. And then I don't know if you've even heard about this, but just today with all the news of Iceland, uh, major eruption of Mount – I'm going to put, put this up here too. This, this, was, this was breaking today. Major eruption of Mount Illawan volcano in Papua New Guinea – send smoke and gas up 50,000 feet in the air. I mean, there, there are earth, all of a sudden there's volcanoes exploding all around the world. Yeah. And it's and, like, and, it's what, what is going on? Is this because of the sun? What, what, what is causing this? I think it's going it, to, it's due to a number of factors. And one of them being the change in the diameter of the earth, it's either expanding or contracting. And I think we're seeing it uh, expanding uh, as planets and moons and stuff age. They start to increase their radius. They they spread out a bit. You can see the stretch marks on the sun. You can see them on Mars, and uh, of course the gas giants. You can't see it, but you can see it here on Earth. That we've had at least a twenty five percent increase in the diameter of the Earth from the day it was formed. You know, it's it's aging. Mm. It's expanding. Yeah. yeah. Uh, slide fifty five on my thing is a link to the live cameras in Iceland to look at when that uh, volcano erupts. Oh, you okay. Go you got a live. Yeah. Okay, okay. I'm going to that right now because I'm going to bookmark that. All right, so I'm going to put show everybody that. And okay, yeah. Is this it and, right here? Yep, that's the one. You can go okay. down. There's a lot of them down. <laughs> okay. There's a lot of cameras. Um, uh, and I, I took a snapshot of another part of that site. If you click on the picture in slide 55, okay. Okay. you'll see, um, you'll see a picture. In in 3D, uh, where those little blue dots are at the top, um, mm. that's the the earthquakes occurring underneath that volcano, telling you it's about wow. to erupt. Wow. Okay. So wow. you can monitor that then by going, of course, to that link you've given them to see all these live cameras and see what's happening. But that's another one that's you know. Uh, uh, very, in fact, Iceland is where a North Pole, uh, where a North Pole was many many moons ago uh, hmm. thousands of years uh, the, the the north pole moved a bit in a jagged uh, path up to where it is now and it's continuing to move over toward um uh russia uh, to the siberian plain anyway, oh my goodness that's that's crazy you're blowing our minds dan you're blowing our minds wow <laughs> i mean good lord in this program i gotta go back and watch this program just to <laughs> digest everything that we've covered we've covered the antichrist we've covered the potential false prophet we've covered volcanoes we've covered i don't even know what all we've covered stan this this has been an amazing amazing show and think about it happy thanksgiving this is a Thanksgiving <laughs> show. I mean, who, who, <laughs> oh, this, this is, this is live on Thanksgiving night, y'all. You've had turkey, your, your, your bellies are full, your, your, you've watched football and all this, and you end the day with this, with Stan Dale and all this information. Wow. <laughs> Boom. <laughs> I debated. I debated knowing this is going to be at the end of all the tryptophan that people are reading. I yeah, debated. exactly. exactly. <laughs> uh, it's going to give them nightmares, I'm afraid. But uh, it, it, what we need to share past yeah. Thanksgiving with people, yeah. um, it it is so important. And it, it slides fifty through uh, fifty two through fifty four on my show image page are maps uh, to dealing with nuclear attacks on the United States, and that's coming. OK, yeah, yeah. Um, if you click on 52 on the picture, you'll see uh, this was in one of Holly's uh, uh, pages uh, or illustrations in the uh, Prudent Places CD-ROM. And you can see um, wow. where it says, uh, let's see if I can get that. OK, if 2000 warheads uh, attack us, then those black dots show what the targets will be. The, the purple triangles is target in a 500 warfare attack. Only that it will hit our nuclear reactors. It will hit our missile bases. And then uh, the, uh, the the square red squares are cities and the star red stars are state capitals. So this, this map, mm. you know, she put that in there whenever it was in 2006. Wow. That's going to happen. And then if you look at slide 53, 
um, it shows the 50 cities uh, out of 2,000 uh, to be nuked in a full-scale, you know, uh, war. Um, okay. 20,000 nuclear warheads. Okay, okay. So this is 50 cities. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so, so that's what I was told. Now, now, I don't know if this, you know, matches what he was telling me, but he, this guy was telling me that's in the military that he was told in intelligence that China has already mapped out 50 cities that is that they've got missiles locked on from Cuba right now. That's it. You're looking at it right there. Oh my goodness. Wow. That's unbelievable. And, I know. And go over to slide 54 and click on that. And that shows okay. you, um, uh, major wildfires uh, and uh, fallout from these different things. You'll notice they're all going in kind of a southeasterly direction. Mm -hmm. Yep. So sure are. if you're if you're in that side of a nuclear attack, uh, you can expect fallout. So, and looking, oh Lord, I'm in trouble because that's where I live. They're all yeah. coming to us, Alabama. Look out. <laughs> well, it's time to leave. You know. Um, yeah. Yeah. Let's get yeah. A ticket on the Rapture Express. Uh, oh yeah. Yeah. I need to get out of here before all this happens. In the name of Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> We all need to get out of this place. It's just oh, bad. Well, Stan, I, what I, what a what a show this has been. I mean, I can't believe we have almost been going an hour already. This is incredible, and this is so much information. And I want to remind everybody: it's so simple, so simple to do. All you got to do, so easy to remember. StanDeo.com. When you go to StanDeo.com, you'll go to his website. Everything that we have shown you is over the right-hand side, you'll see it flash in there as I put my mouse over it. It says, Show Images. You click on Show Images, and everything he ever talks about, whatever show he's on and what he's doing personally, outside of just shows, is there for you to go and look. And, and it tells you about all the links of where he's at and where he's going to be a guest with people. And then I always like to point Oh, by the way, Stan, let me just go ahead and tell it. Breaking news tonight. I am now, uh, the big picture is now an EMP affiliate, and we are ex excited that down below, this is the first show ever, and it'll also be on our website this week, but down below there's a direct link if you'd like to get an EMP shield for your home, which Sandy and I did when we built our house during the pandemic. It's on our house, and you can get a $50 discount by using the code Larry Raglan. So I'm so excited. Click it, get your $50 discount in it. So, yeah, I'm excited to be uh, a part of EMP Shield. And then, of course, where I was headed before I got distracted there is the news section. This is the news section where you can go and Miss Holly oh, well, takes care of that. Well, you'll notice that October 4th was the last time that we updated this. Uh, Holly had just had, uh, what, 20 years of doing this. And uh, so yeah. she's uh, stopped doing it for Maybe okay. forever. I'm not sure, but that's uh, okay. So that, that's okay. You know, there were things that were running behind here in the house. We've got a lot of stuff we've got to reorganize, yeah. and it takes two yeah. of us. Yeah, so. I understand completely. But I, but I do want to say that I am excited to be an affiliate with EMP Shield, uh, and you know all that you're doing with that because all the stuff we're talking about, the stuff that's going on in the cosmos, and all this with our son, you're going to want to need. You're going to need an EMP Shield. So. You can click the description down below, and uh, it also it's not on my website yet, but there'll be a place for you to order directly from our website. So we're proud to be a part of your company. Well, good uh, good deal that you've joined us. I mean, uh, your listeners also need to know that you can put an EMP shield on your vehicles, your trucks, your cars, your tractors. Put them on your uh, portable generators, diesel and gasoline, and you know you can put them on your house, of course. But uh, solar panels, if you've got those in an inverter, you can put it between the, the uh, panels and the inverter to protect that as well. Mm. So it, it protects a lot of things. And we are also making them for nuclear reactors, which is probably not going to be your use. But <laughs> Wow. <laughs> I don't know if I'll need one of them, but it's good to know that you're going to be making them. That's crazy. Wow. Yeah, that, that presents a different problem. But uh, we're also making it, um, well, a lot of our military bases um, – have nuclear reactors in them. Uh, they're tactical nuclear reactors. They're about the size of a car. Mm. And uh, people don't know that. But uh, anyway, mm. uh, we're wow. protecting those as well. That's try amazing. to keep power. Well, we've got to keep the military. We got, yeah. Yeah, we got to keep it going. And um, and, it, and if you do click that down below, use the discount code Larry Ragman. And obviously, when you do that, going through that link, it helps our show here. It helps what we're doing. And we appreciate yeah. it. 
Stan, you are such a blessing. You're such a gift to the body of Christ. Sandy and I love you so much and appreciate you. And one day, I hope, one day, I just hope, because I know you're not going to fly anywhere, so we hope we can fly out somewhere in that area. If I'm out there preaching or something, would love to come and, and meet you and Holly and just thank you for all that you do. But if I don't see you in this world face-to-face, -face, I'll be with you for eternity. That's for sure. At the wedding feast, for sure. We'll be sitting across having our hamburgers or whatever. Yes, yes. <laughs> thank you, Stan. Happy Thanksgiving to you and Holly. And to you and to Sandy as well. Thank you. All right. God bless. Have a great day. You too. Bye-bye. Thank you so much, Stan Dale. What a blessing you are to the body of Christ and to the world in general. Thank you for the big picture audience. And what a blessing. If you're watching this live, you may be watching on the replay, but if you're watching this live, you watch this show on Thanksgiving night. What a big deal that is to Sandy and I that you would choose, uh, after all that turkey and dressing and sweet potato casserole, to sit down and watch us talk about the things of the world. That just shows me that your eyes are open and that you do understand everything that's going on. Well, have a good night. Go get some rest. Sleep that turkey off. And remember, we ain't woke, but we certainly are awake. God bless and happy Thanksgiving. <laughs>